Welcome to Battle of the Food Scientists. Battle of the Food Scientists is an annual competition put on by the Department of Food Science and Technology at UNL. Teams of two to four students compete to create the best food products within specific parameters. This year's theme is baking. In round one, each team is required to make a high protein gluten-free cookie in 45 minutes. So we're definitely gonna look for making sure they hit their protein content, making sure it's all gluten-free. There's no contamination from any wheat products because we do have ingredients that have wheat in them. So if they accidentally use that, we definitely look for that. Then obviously looking for taste and appearance, making sure that it tastes good. And then last is observing their good manufacturing practice while they were cooking. So making sure that they were using gloves, hair nets, beard nets, keeping their station clean, not cross-contaminating tools, and that type of stuff. So I'm David Gomez. I was on team number two. Uh, so we were Kevin Lievano, Armando Lerma, and Carmen Perez. And we were all Latinos. Uh, Armando was, is from Mexico, and the other two are from Colombia and I'm from Colombia myself. So at first it was really confusing because uh, we were given two different recipes, one for a normal cookie and one for the gluten-free high protein cookie. So we weren't sure which cookie we had to make, so we had to ask which one. We were like, no, you have to make the second one, the first one just to like, to kind of walk through you the recipe and stuff. And it was like, oh, okay. My name's Madeline Jasky. Um, so the other two people on my team were um, Olivia Kinney, who is also a senior food science major, and then Caitlin, who, Caitlin Day, who's also a senior food science major. We kind of made a name with the KitchenAid mixers. I don't know if you've seen like the little dates, snicker date frozen treats that were all over like Instagram and TikTok like maybe a year ago. That was kind of our like path there. Um, so we took dates, um, peanut butter powder, chocolate chips, and yeah, just kind of the normal recipe, um, and tried to make that. Also, Caitlin, who is in our group, is um, gluten-free and also can't have peanut butter, but, um, so it was kind of, she knew a lot more about like the gluten-free flours and stuff, which was helpful. My name is Prabhashish Bose. I'm a graduate student in food science and technology. I started in 2021 as a grad student in food science. We, uh, our team was team one and we named it Ambrosia and Ambrosia technically means uh, food for God as per Roman literature. Our team comprised of uh, two other lab members of my lab. Uh, one is Shantini, she is also a PhD student, just joined this spring. And um, there was a, another girl called Sarathan, she also joined PhD this spring. And, um, and comprised of another member from uh, another uh, lab postdoc, uh, Urvinder. It was like just 30 minutes, so like a lot of things to do. So we needed to change the uh, standard recipe and having like 20%, around 20% protein in the cookie was a challenge. So we were running through making the calculations. I'm Adam Lears. I'm a sophomore here at Lincoln, Nebraska in the food science department. Me and Janine were on a team together. Um, we were the two sophomores there, so we called ourselves the wise fools, which is what sophomore literally translates to. And so we were really excited to come to a bake-off. The first thing that we did is we looked at um, the cookies and we were like, what can we do to make this? So we did the math out to get as close to seven to 10 grams as possible and still come out with a good cookie. And then after that, we decided to use almond flour because it was gluten-free but still had a high protein content. And then we went directly to peanut butter um, and used some powdered peanut butter to ensure that we were able to hit the high protein content. And then we added some whey isolate to get all the way up there. And then to kind of spice the cookie up a little bit, we add some uh, uh, peanut butter chocolate chips to it and then some um, cinnamon on top to give it some extra flavor. All teams did not have enough time to fully bake their cookies, which resulted in a five minute extension. Even with the extra five minutes, teams struggled to get their cookies fully baked for the judges. We spent too much time during the calculations to know which flour to use and that the final cookie had the proper amount of protein. So because of that, and we wasted a lot of time, our cookies didn't cook through, so they were raw and not edible, so that was kind of sad. When we baked the cookie, it had a lot of peanut butter, so it kind of ran through, and the texture wasn't really as what we expected, but it wasn't that bad in taste, like it was tasty. So that's how round one ended, kind of messed up situation. 
kind of after everyone took their cookies out, especially the group in front of us, that was just like a giant sheet pan. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was kind of like, maybe we have some. <laughs> but like overall, I don't think that round went great for any of the groups. Um, so yeah. In round two, the contestants had 50 minutes again to create any baked good they pleased. The only catch was they had to use the secret ingredients, cricket powder and Swiss Miss Cinnamilk hot cocoa mix. The cricket powder, although odd and weird, it could easily be incorporated into things. Like I just kind of thought of it as like a flour or some kind of like dry material that was kind of already in the recipe. So I wasn't too freaked out by it. And like Swiss Miss, like I, I don't know, like that's just like fancy cocoa powder in my brain. Yeah, uh, going to the second round, I think that we had a good plan of where we wanted to go. Um, even before the competition, we were planning on doing a de deconstructed pie if we were able to, because we think that'd be nice and to spice things up a little bit. So we had a good idea of where we wanted the ingredients to go. Having the cricket powder was kind of a challenge because it has a particular distinct smell which can disrupt the total uh, taste of the food. So we were kind of uh, uh, afraid what would happen with the cricket powder. So we decided to make gajar ka halwa. We had pre-decided that and um, then it, we named it uh, as the Great Indian Carrot Porridge. Um, it, is, it is a dish made of carrot, uh, cooked in milk and it's sweet in taste. So I, we thought that it would really go well as a sweet dish in a baked product. It would be unique. During the meantime, between the first and the second challenge, we looked through recipes on the internet and we found a brownie recipe. Uh, so we decided that yeah, we can make a brownie and just uh, replace some of the flour with the cricket powder and use some of the cinnamon to give it more flavor and to mask the, the flavor on, on, the, on the cricket powder, on the brownie. So me and Janine split it up and so she went to make the crust of the pie, which we turned into a crumble. Um, and I immediately went to make the actual um, inside and the filling. So it's just water when you add some cornstarch, some sugar, and then the actual cherries to it. And then mostly it's just mixing around, getting to a place where you have a good, um, both texture and taste. And then adding in the uh, Swiss Miss uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which was one of the mystery ingredients. Um, so we ended up making whoopie pies. We had, um I believe it was like s'mores cookie mix and we just kind of took out the s'more part and added in the cricket part <laughs> and so we did um, the Swiss Miss like in there baked the cookie then kind of while the cookies were in the oven we assembled the frosting which we then added um, some craisins too that we then like rehydrated and blended up and it was actually pretty good um, yeah we did end up um, kind of forgetting that cookies were hot when they came out of the oven. <laughs> and so it was hard, uh, kind of at that stage, right at the end, to just make sure that the frosting wasn't just falling like out of the cookie. While the judges tasted their products, each group had to come up with a pitch for their baked goods as well. And uh, we felt, I wouldn't say confident, but at least we finished the product, we followed the guidelines and he just had to, to taste and see what the others had to present. We thought we did like a pretty good pitch, so overall I think we were really proud of what we did accomplish and it went better than the first round, I think we all thought. So yeah, I, I really I really was happy with what we did. For this year's Battle of the Food Scientist, getting a $10 mill gift card is Team 2. Uh, I think none of us were expecting to win anything, so when we got announced as the, the runner-ups, we were very surprised, but we were really, really happy. Team one. Our team work really worked well, one thing, and the other thing was that it was a great thing to plan beforehand for the second round. So we just decided in the morning, thanks to our advisor, we had a quick talk that, and he was like, you need to make something unique to stand out. And then we suddenly decided, okay, let's make something traditional Indian food, and it would help us stand out. So um, planning ahead was definitely a bonus point. And then all the team members working together, it was a good team spirit and teamwork that helped us, made us win.